Hey guys, welcome back to JCW Outdoors. This is kind of the kickoff video for the 2022-2023 South Dakota pheasant hunting season. Uh, this video is it's something I've wanted to do for a while and it's in response to what I'm starting to see on social media and will continue to see here in the next month or so. And that's guys who want to make the trip to South Dakota and they really don't know where to start. In this video, I'm going to focus on if you want to come to South Dakota and you want to hunt public land. Uh, certainly, you can go to a uh, reserve, commercial operation, knock on some doors. That, that's great. I'm not going to cover any of that. This is solely for the guys who want to come and hit up the public spots. So anyhow, that's what I've got. Feels good to actually turn on the GoPro again. Um, I've thought about doing videos all throughout the year, but... Uh, this is a pheasant hunting channel first and foremost and sadly I've got a full-time job and I can't hunt pheasants quite as much as I'd like to where I could kick out say a video a week for an entire year but I don't know I think it works out all right so anyway guys here we go all right guys so as we go into this video and where I do kind of the the screenshot and talk about the various aspects of what I would be looking for if I were to come to South Dakota and hunt public land is that there are different types of public land that you kind of need to be aware of. Um, my personal favorite is uh, the waterfowl production area. These are often going to be on the edges of sloughs and lakes, uh, provide fantastic habitat for nesting, uh, both for uh, waterfowl and uh, especially for pheasants. At the same time, waterfowl production areas are not going to offer a lot by way of trees or food plots. So something to keep in mind that when you go to a waterfowl production area, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the, the elements that the pheasants need to survive are nearby. This is gonna differ from a game production area where uh, the state has put in uh, different types of shelter belts. A lot of times they'll have food plots, different types of grasses. And again, you know, a game production area is going to be more conducive to producing pheasants. At the same time, it's going to produce more hunters who go there. So as you guys are looking at the map, just be aware of the different types of public ground and how that ground might uh, be conducive to good pheasant hunting or how it might not be so favorable to finding birds. All right. So step one would be to go to the South Dakota Game Fish and Parks homepage. Um, I'm not going to go through the license portion, um, yeah, it's, it's not very difficult, and if I go in there, I've got everything saved, and I don't really want my information to pop up. Not that there would really be anything nefarious to be done with it, but, yeah. So anyhow, we're going to go to Hunt. And click on that tab. And before I get into looking at the map, our public hunting atlas. I want to scroll down here a little bit more. See if I can find it here. Go to our small game. Pheasant. And I get down here to these related maps. Pheasant harvest. This map is a great place to go to see where the most pheasants are being harvested per square mile. Um, it's based on 2020. I would assume the 2021 data will be out, uh, I think, sometime in July. But anyway, so as we kind of take a look at the map here, we can see that, you know, Brown County is in the red. Red is highest. Tan would be lowest. Uh, Brown County, that's uh, Aberdeen. Beetle. Huron, uh, Aurora, that's going to be um, Aurora and Davidson are going to be Mitchell, Hughes is Pier, and down in here in this area is your Golden Triangle, the Gregory Winter area. Anyway, so when you look at this, you can say, all right, obviously I want to hit maybe this area. There's a lot of pheasants being harvested in there, which is fine. Uh, caution. The more pheasants being harvested, the more hunters are going to be there and the greater competition for public land. Not saying it can't be done. I know uh, I know one guy in particular who does very well. And um, 
so yeah, it's up to you. Then you can take a look at some of these other counties, you know, this Marshall Roberts Day area, a lot of lakes, a little bit hillier. Um, there's a ton of public land, maybe not the best for pheasant hunting, but there are pheasants there. And in these areas, you're probably going to find less competition for public land. So now you've taken a look at the map and you're thinking, well, hey, maybe I should try down in this area here. There seems to be a pretty good uh, population of pheasants. Want to take a look at uh, places with hotels. A lot of small towns do have hotels. I mean, they're there for hunters. So you can check that out. Um, or you can get in a little bit bigger town that's got more hotel options, more food options, and, you know, base your hunt from there. With the shooting time starting at 10, great opportunity to get your breakfast and get out and get on the road. And, I mean, you can travel quite a ways. I'm kind of focusing on this Huron area just because A, it's known as a, a pheasanty area, and B, it'll it'll suffice for our purposes here. I'm not saying, yeah, you need to go to Huron, that's the way to do it, but just for our purposes, we're going to pretend that we've decided we're going to hunt in this area. So we've looked at the pheasant harvest map. Now we're going to want to take a look at the actual public land map. Make sure I can find this here. So, Public Hunting Atlas. You can read through all that splash screen stuff if you want. Uh, the legend just lists the various types of hunting land, or excuse me, the various types of public land. So, as we sit back and take a gander at uh, most of the state of South Dakota, anything that's colored in is public land. We've got our Black Hills, Custer National Forest, um, get out here into the, uh, I want to say that's the Buffalo Gap National Grasslands in the Badlands area, Fort Pier National Grasslands. As I'd mentioned before, there's a ton of lakes up in this northeastern corner, the Glacial Lakes region, Coteau de Prairie, and I mean, pretty much throughout the state, we're going to find a lot of public land. So like I said, we're taking a look at the Huron area. And you can usually venture to guess that the closer you are to town, the more likely these spots are to get hit. Again, it, it's, you don't, don't take that to mean there aren't pheasants there. Public land is very unique in the fact that you could have a piece of private property with uh, cornfields and shelter belts, but without the grass, you aren't going to have the pheasants. And that's what public land really provides, are these big open areas where pheasants can nest and where they can roost. You know, the cattails, you might not think of them as a go-to area early in the season, but they're going to use them at some point in time, and later on in the season, they'll, they'll use them more. So I'm taking a look at some of these areas here. I um, actually had an opportunity to drive through and take a look at this uh, big spot. So this is a pretty neat area. Um, you know, there aren't a lot of crops around, but it's huge and it's grassy, and it's a great place for pheasants to reproduce. You can drive around, go a little bit further. See, we've got some of these other... Uh, Kind of public shooting areas, uh, crep land, uh, the green is your waterfowl production area. So you've got places to hunt. I alluded to it a little bit earlier about um, some land has it all. Okay, pheasants, we all know the saying, they need habitat, habitat, habitat. What that means is they need a place for reproducing in the spring, a um, place to eat, and a place to survive the winter, which is cattails. Um, additionally, they need easy access to food. You know, spring, summer, and fall, they're able to eat a lot of bugs, they're able to eat weed seeds. It's when you get later in the season where all the weed seeds have dropped, the bugs are gone, and it really comes down to grains, corn, and soybeans, and uh, Sorghum is typically a food plot crop. I don't know of too many people that are growing sorghum just as a, as a cash crop. I could be wrong. 
At least in this area, they aren't. So, you're looking at your map. Here's a public area you can hunt. Check out the areas around it. You know, the, the more grains that you have, the better off you're going to be. And I always tell people that there's a how you hunt that matters. You know, little tips of hunting into the wind, things of that nature. We all know the why that we hunt. It's in our soul. One thing I think is incredibly important that people overlook is the when. And when you pheasant hunt is a very broad conversation. So the first thing, when, would be time of year. Season starts uh, middle of October. Obviously, South Dakota has the most pheasants it's going to have in a year the day before pheasant season opens up. So earlier in the season, you're just going to have more birds by virtue of the fact that the roosters haven't been harvested yet. At the same time, early season has a lot, a lot of habitat. Um, take a look at um, some of these places. I'm really trying hard not to hotspot, so I'm just going about at random here. All right, so let's say it's October 20th. You show up to hunt this area. All of this could be a spot where a pheasant might be hiding. Now you transfer that into uh, Thanksgiving. Uh, a lot of this grass is starting to die out. It's getting pretty light. So maybe only some of these thicker areas are going to be able to be hunted. Move into December. Late December, we've got a big snowstorm. Pretty much all of this grass is, I don't want to say worthless, but you're going to waste a lot of time and energy going over ground that really offers nothing for pheasants. Up along the edge of the sloughs, however, is where your cattails are going to be, your thermal habitat, so there's areas to focus on. So what I'm driving at is early in the season, you have more birds, but there's more cover. Later in the year, there might be a few less birds, but they're going to be more concentrated into uh, specific areas. All things to take in mind. You know, I, I love it all. Early season, mid-season, and late season, I get out and get after it. But it does change, and it's uh, certainly something to be aware of. One other thing that I'll mention, I'm not seeing it in this area here. Zoom out way farther than I needed to. But um, certain walk-in areas, you know, I'm not seeing one. Is this crap? Yeah. Anyway, I'm looking for a walk-in area here. And ultimately, you can be there end of October. Big cornfield, nice slough to hunt, looks really good. A month later, that corn could be picked, and it could be plowed up, and the pheasants have moved on away. All things that you just kind of need to bear in mind. And again, there's there's no guarantees or 100%. You know, you can have a plowed cornfield, but it's next to some really nice habitat, so the pheasants are still there. As long as they can scratch grain, they'll do it. It's easier to pick waste grain in a cornfield that has been combined but not plowed, but... Even after you plow it, there's tons of stuff that comes up for the pheasants to be able to eat. When, the second part of this when question is time of day. Early in the season, and in fact for most of the season when I go out to hunt, I wouldn't even think about going out till probably, you know, 2 o'clock. Granted, I live very close to the areas that I hunt, but really, 2 o'clock is about when I start hunting. It's sometimes earlier, obviously, but you want to get there, or you want to be out there when the sun sets. If, I, if you glean one thing from this video, it's you want to be in the field that hour and a half before the sun goes down until the sun sets. Because that's the time the birds are going to go out, pick grain, and then come back in. 
Sometimes they'll fly way back in where they're going. A lot of times they just hoof it. They just walk back. So being there in that golden hour is important. Additionally, there's something that uh, pheasant hunters refer to as transition habitat. Essentially, so let's pretend that this is really short grass here. On a warm fall day, sure, they might hang out there. But more than likely, they're going to pick their grain and they're going to go and they're going to get on the edge of the cattails. A place where the grass might be a little bit thicker, where they can get in, get warm, be protected. So you always want to consider the edges where tall grass blends into short grass, uh, where crop turns into grassland, um, all that. So I hate to keep kind of repeating myself, so I apologize if I'm doing that, but it isn't overly complicated. It just comes down to where do I want to hunt? Well, take a look and we can see that there's a lot of public land in a lot of places. And where you set up, that's entirely up to you. The next thing I will mention is, all right, you picked an area, you're staying here on, you're gonna hunt these. You get out, you spend a day or two hunting the various public land and you just aren't finding anything. There are so many different things that can affect localized pheasant populations that I know a couple years ago, there was a hailstorm west of my hometown and there was a area probably about five miles by a mile long two miles long the, the hail wiped them out so you could hunt there have the best habitat in the world but there just weren't pheasants what i'm getting at is if you're hunting a spot you aren't finding anything move you know go 50 miles in another direction go find somewhere else where hey maybe i'll zip down in this area again mitchell very popular pheasant destination but, you know, again, I, I've never hunted these areas, so I don't know if these spots are good or not. I'm just trying to give an overview of what I would do if I was coming from out of state and had never hunted public land in South Dakota for pheasants. So one area doesn't work. We're going to try another area and keep moving around. Um, check out different spots and don't be afraid to road hunt. In that hour before sunset is when you'll see the pheasants often come to gravel roads to uh, pick sand or gravel for their crops and gizzards. You know, get along the edge of that road and it helps if you have two people. We'll say have a guy down at this end and you'll start walking that ditch. If you've got your dog, Try not to let it get across the fence onto private property. If you're hunting the roadside of public property, as I'm kind of showing right here, have at it. But, you know, just work that ditch up and down. Find something great. If not, jump in the truck, cruise around, maybe find another spot where there's some corn and hunt the ditch again. To recap, take a look at the map. Find out where there are good pockets of public ground that you're able to hunt their proximity, proximity, their proximity for uh, a place to stay for you and the dogs. Um, some of you guys might be camping, but uh, I'm sure a lot of you are gonna be looking for hotels that'll accommodate your, uh, your canine companions. And then, you know, what's, what's in the vicinity as far as amount of available public land, as well as the types of public land that are gonna be available to you. And I, I can't repeat it enough, Pay attention to your time of day. I can't tell you how often I'll be headed out to go hunt the last 90 minutes of the day and I'll see vehicles with guys clad in orange coming back into town. Maybe they have their pheasants, um, you know, it, it certainly could be that. But I know that some of the guys who come in from out of state, they just, they're chomping at the bit and for good reason. They get out at 10 and they hunt really, really hard throughout the day and a lot of times those pheasants just are not on public ground. They get burnt out, they're not having success. So they say heck with it and head back to town. And that's when you need to be headed out. So it's okay to get out and hunt right away at 10 o'clock, but um, take a little break in the middle of the afternoon and just be sure you're out there. 
Not only are the pheasants going to be headed back to public ground to roost for the evening, you just can't beat South Dakota sunsets. We might not have a lot of things by way of beautiful mountains and trees on the eastern and south central part of the state, but we've got the sunsets. So anyway, guys, I hope that helps you out. If you have any other questions, uh, just feel free to throw a comment down in there, and I, I do pretty well on responding. So anyhow, guys, you know the drill. Keep your tradition alive, and good luck this season. Thanks.